little bell. So today's today's session, we're focusing, well, we're coming back to, you know, what is mindfulness? What does it mean? Um, and this was prompted, um, it was a, it was an article I read and heard, and there was a chap called, it was a monk, Shinzen Young. He was talking about the different meanings of mindfulness, um, the word itself, the type of awareness, the behaviour, and it kind of inspired this week's uh, writing. I don't know if you had a chance to read the the blog, the email, and it talks about. Talk, it took the two th main things I want to focus on today are the mindfulness as as a state of being, as a type of awareness, and then the practice of mindfulness in the form of meditation. There's lots of other types of mindfulness. We can sort of do mindful eating, mindful communication, mindful doing, you know, uh, colouring in and these kind of kind of things. But the two two main ones I want to focus on is is particularly the difference between mindfulness as a state of mind or being and mindfulness as a meditation practice. And the reason the reason for this is because we have you know we have some sense when we're going into a meditation practice that we have um, intentions to quieten the mind to relax ourselves to calm the mind and you know naturally there's some desire to benefit from the practice otherwise we wouldn't be doing it in the first place and then there's the state of mindfulness or the type of awareness or the state of being being mindful which is characterized by calmness, by, by acceptance, by ease, by non-judgment, perhaps quietness, space, spaciousness. And the reason that the, the distinction is important, because if we come into a meditation practice, into the practice, with expectations of being calm, centered, focused, kind, joyful, da, 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 all these wonderful mindfulness characteristics, then we're almost setting ourselves up for frustration. We're placing a load of expectations in front of ourselves and going, I want that, I, I want that, I want this, I want that. And unfortunately, <laughs> that process really interferes with our mindfulness journey. So the, the mindfulness comes about quite naturally when we stop trying so hard to get it. It's almost like the snake eating its own tail. We have to really train, and that's what the meditation practice is for, emphasis on the word practice, is because when we when we practice mindfulness, we actually realize and recognize how unmindful we are most of the time. And this isn't to beat ourselves up or to gaslight ourselves, it's to highlight the nature of our minds. And the, the fact that when we're not aware of what we're doing and thinking, then we're running on a form of autopilot, some kind of conditioning pattern from the past and because of the construct of our minds through evolution and a whole host of other things conditioning often our minds don't always lead us to the most helpful places there the mind can be quite reactive um, it can be um, very selfish It can be unrealistic. And, and sometimes just false. It can be wrong, completely wrong about things. So if we're relying, if we're not mindful, then we're more than likely are running on autopilot. And for most of us, most of the time, we're civilised and it's not causing a great deal of harm to anyone or... Uh, ourselves but sometimes it does take us down funny roads sometimes we are um, hind hindered by our own 
conditioned patterns. And I'm sure most of us can relate to that in some way. Some kind of habit that we have. Um, a little bit of a self-destruct button or an, an, an unhelpful tendency. Let's just say that. So what, so what we're doing when we're practicing mindfulness, we're noticing the difference between being mindful and present with the breath. And then we're noticing what happens when we wander. We get lost in stories in, in you know, and that can be, that can be anything can happen in that world. When our attention, when our focus drifts from the present moment, which is always here, always now, always very real, into anything, you know, the Chronicles of Narnia or, or whatever our story is in our life and getting lost in the, you know, the thoughts about the past, you know, usually you know, regret or wanting things to be that way again, or the future, worrying, filling our minds full of, full of worry about what could happen. So, what, we, what we're aiming to do is to, not to be calm, we're not, we're not doing anything wrong when our mind wanders, it's just its habit. And our job in mindfulness is to change the habit of the mind. So we are doing something when we practice meditation. There is some form of effort, some form of intention. It's not about just completely letting go, although that's quite a nice thing to do. There has to be some sense or understanding of what we are trying to do because if we don't have that we're more likely just to fall into the um the misconceptions and the myths and the self-berating stuff so when we practice where you know we run through the usual setup of meditation and one one big part of a meditation um and part of the setup is, is setting our intention. And we can set an intention to be mindful of the breath. We can set an intention to do a body scan. We can set an intention to um, practice self-compassion through a, a mindfulness meditation. And we might do say, we'll do this for 20 minutes. So there's a definite kind of aim. But then it comes down to the technique and in 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 the mindfulness training i done they they said your intention is like an arrow and you you fire it and then you you let it go so this is our aim this is where we're going but once the meditation starts the arrow is flying free and we can't we can't change its course at that point we'll find things like the wind interfere and that'll be a thought storm for example and then it'll end up not landing where we wanted it to. But that's not the point. The point is to remain aware of what the mind and the body are doing during the meditation. One way I like to, to phrase it is every condition, every condition in front of us is the perfect condition for mindfulness. Every condition in front of us is the perfect condition for mindfulness if we're aware of it. So whatever's happened in the preceding moments to your realization that you were lost in the story, that gone for five, 10, 15 minutes lost in the story. And then there's that moment of arrival of remembering of, oh, I'm meditating, <laughs> or I'm meant to be meditating. That's our moment of mindfulness. And it's very easy to fill that moment with more story about what's just happened. Ah, oh, I've been lost in thought. And then we beat ourselves up thinking that we're not being mindful. Yet 
that moment is the opportunity to practice mindfulness to that is the condition in front of us okay the mind is busy and lost in thought that is coming from a place of mindfulness the observation does that make sense i hope that makes sense so the meditation is always starting again it's always starting again you know that's why the breath is so good as a as a focal point for meditation because it's constantly renewing itself the in breath makes way for the out breath the out breath makes way for the in breath this constant cycle but always now and what we're training to do is to get ourselves to come back to that breath or to this present moment it's not the breath especially it's just the breath is always always here and now so that will can um i can't think of the word conclude the the discussion for today um it's a simple one and it will lead us into a very very simple meditation practice as well and this is really to be aware of what's happening as it happens we will use the the breath as a center point or a, a focal point for our meditation and we'll do that in two ways during the meditation the initial stage of the meditation there'll be an option to follow the natural flow of the breath and there'll be an option to adjust the breath because sometimes breathing a little bit more deeply and with a little bit more intention can help our minds to come out of you know total chaos day mode into a little bit more manageability as we settle the nervous system with the breath but after that initial period of five minutes or so if you have been regulating the breath it's really important that we're able to to let go of that because that's almost a holding on and a forcing we want our meditation to be as natural as possible we want it to unfold and to observe it in that way without the need you know the breath is almost a need to change it again if we're putting too much control on it that being said I always invite people if they are struggling really struggling with a busy mind to breathe a little bit deeper come back to the breath you know breathe a little bit harder just for a few moments and then allow the breath to return to normal so it's using the breath as a tool but not clinging to it so hard that it becomes an obstacle does anybody have any questions okay so usually the first thing we attend to is our posture or our positioning and I like to invite people to find a relaxed posture one that enables the body to soften a little shouldn't be forcing ourselves into too much of a tense position and if our intention is to stay mindful and aware during this practice then it's probably more helpful to sit up but if your main aim is to relax if you need more rest then please lay down as well and we can invite the eyes to close and it's here we set our intention our intention for this practice is to notice the mind wonder and to bring it back to the breath And we may need to do that a hundred or a thousand times during the meditation. Sometimes helpful to focus on your own motivation for that as well. What's your 
your reason for practicing mindfulness today. And then we can begin to settle and we'll follow the, the sound of the bell into the meditation. Noticing the sound. Noticing there's no effort required to hear. Hearing is happening. And we may be in an environment where there's background noises or distractions. So we can calibrate to that now, just tuning into the sounds around us. And just noticing it's the nature of sounds to arise and fall, to appear and then to disappear. So our practice with, with any sounds, especially if we view them as distractions, is to just let the sound disappear. Just let it flow. And we can bring our attention closer to the breath, noticing how it feels to, to breathe in and out. And during this settling phase with the breath, we can deepen, soften, lengthen the breath. Bringing a even balanced flow to the breath. So our inhale and exhale are a similar length. You may wish to use numbers to, to balance that out by counting to three or four on the inhale and then three or four on the exhale. Or you may wish to visualize the waves of the sea coming up the beach and falling away again. In the same way the air comes in and then falls out of the body. And if regulating the breath in this way isn't helpful for you, then just watching and observing the natural flow of the breath is fine as well. So part of this observation is, of course, with the mind. But in this settling practice, we're more interested in the felt sense of the breath, the sensations of the breath. And 
noticing the temperature of the air. Noticing any sensations in and around the nose or the mouth. These ever changing sensations. We may notice the, the chest or the belly or the back rising on the inhale and then falling on the exhale. So we're choosing to commit our awareness, our attention to the breath, to the sensations of the breath. In spite of the, the mental activity that we may experience, so if there's Lots of thoughts, lots of mental noise in the form of commentary or expectation or problem solving or fantasy. As tempting as it is to pursue or to follow, as soon as we notice that we're thinking, our job is to return awareness to the breathing body. Letting go of the thoughts, coming back to the direct experience of the breath. Breathing in a balanced way. Visualising waves, if that's helpful. And we're invited to let go of regulating the breath in any way and allowing it to return to its natural flow. If it's short, it's short. If it's long, it's long. If it's rough or if it's smooth. Noisy or quiet. Regular or irregular. We're noticing the, the characteristics of the breath, but we're not judging it. bringing our attention to the body, particularly noticing what it feels like to let go of the breath, to exhale. Noticing it's the, the body's natural relaxation response to let go of the breath. And we get closer and closer to our body, closer and closer to our experience with every 
with every out breath. And then taking in the other sensations in the body. Aware of what may be a very obvious sensation, maybe the weight of our bottoms on the chair. Maybe the contact of clothing on the skin. Bringing awareness to the obvious sensations of the body. Maybe that's a discomfort for you. Maybe there's a little bit of pain. And we're encouraged to observe that. Observe those sensations, whatever they're made of. They're big or small, hot or cold, tight, loose. Can we allow, allow the sensations to be as they are? Noticing the impermanence of these sensations as they arise and Full, much like sound. Appearing, disappearing. Maybe going one layer under the most obvious, into a more subtle sensation. This might be feeling the air against the skin. Might be that subtle sense of aliveness in the body, something within the body. tingling, the hands can often offer some of the more subtle sensations like tingling, pulsating, And if the mind wanders, or as it wanders, gently return it back to this breath and this body, this breathing body. And we expand our awareness to include include our environment as well. There's no need to, to tune out for this practice. Remembering every condition, every experience is the perfect experience for mindfulness. Just starting again in this moment, coming home to the breath in this moment. So we're open now, we're open to the whole experience, awareness of the breath, 
awareness of the body, awareness of our environment. And awareness of the inner body, the emotions. Awareness of the nature of our minds in this moment. The tone of our thinking. And all of that can carry on, yet our, our focus is this breathing body. The aliveness of this moment. Not this moment as a concept or a thought, but the felt sense of this moment. Sensations of the breath, the sensations of the body. And can we rest? Resting in mindfulness of, of this moment. And bringing our attention closer to the breath, if the mind has wandered, aware of any extra thoughts about that process, any judgment or criticism that might have arisen. Any kind of feeling or, or mood that we're not quite getting it right or we're doing doing it wrong. So just aware, noticing if those kind of thoughts are here and letting those go as well. Remembering it's always possible <clears throat> to start again. We are actively encouraged to start again with each breath.
staying aware of each breath. Is it possible to observe a full inhale? Or a full exhale? And we're only ever asked to do that, to focus on this breath. And there's a little bit of an experiment. Noticing whatever objections there are, whatever criticisms there are to our own mindfulness in this moment. Can we make that thought, that experience, the object of our mindfulness simply by observing it? Not trying to change it. Just observing it. Noticing too that that's just made of more thoughts. And that we're actually okay in this moment. It's just suffering existing on a on the level of thinking. It's only it's only thoughts that suffer. It's only thoughts that have a problem. And as we come toward the end of this meditation, we're invited to dedicate dedicate any benefits of the practice, recognizing that the benefits of, of mindfulness reach beyond ourselves into the community. That when we're more mindful, we're less reactive.
and that however this practice has gone was was exactly how it was meant to be to the benefit of our mindfulness to the benefit of our awareness we all shared a journey but all went on a very unique journey as well and bringing some compassion to this process knowing that Meditation time is often more about discovering how challenging it is to meditate. And then we're, we're not here to be perfect mindfulness people. Our mindfulness increases when we practice meditation, if we bring the attitudes of non-judgment, acceptance, and our base, base level mindfulness increases, we find it easier to be mindful over time, very gradually. And following the sound of the bell back into the group. Hmm. Closing the meditation with a little bit of movement, maybe the hands and feet or the shoulder roll is quite nice. Opening the eyes. <laughs> <laughs>